hello. Uh, my name's Paul Mounsey, and I'm the uh, Director of Cardiac Electrophysiology at the uh, University of North Carolina. And I'm here today to present a, a series of uh, lectures to you about current and emerging options in cardiac electrophysiology that are available at the University of North Carolina. Uh, my topic today is lead extraction management. Uh, lead extraction management is, is an emerging topic in uh, cardiac electrophysiology. We all know that implantable cardiac rhythm management devices, and by that I mean pacers, defibrillators, have transformed the lives of millions of patients with uh, cardiovascular disease. And unfortunately, although these devices work extremely well and help our patients, complications do develop. And these are loose, can loosely be grouped into, into two lots. There are early complications that are quite familiar. The incision can break down, pacemaker leads can, can become dislodged, and they're usually easily dealt with in the implanting center. The more ominous complications of, uh, of uh, cardiac rhythm management devices, though, are those that occur late, later infections in the devices, and also when the device can itself appears through the skin. And coping with those sorts of complications is a much more difficult business than coping with the early complications. So when devices get infected, they can present in all sorts of different ways. What I'm showing here is a patient who's had a had a defibrillator in place for, for many years. You can see that the incision is, is well healed and this is clearly a chronic device, but you can also see gross swelling around the device and some erythema, some redness around the device, suggesting the possibility of an abscess forming around the device. And this is a relatively common way that people with infected devices can present. It's an uncommon problem, but this is a common way for it to present. On um, this example, what we're seeing again is a, um, a patient with a chronic device and an incision that's previously been well healed, but you can see an incision cellulitis, actually res re erythema around the incision, suggesting again the prob possibility or probability of an infection, a deep-seated infection in the patient. But especially in thin people, devices that are close to the surface can erode and appear through the surface. And when a, a device, this, in this case it's a defibrillator, actually appears through the skin, then this can lead to infection in the device and the device simply has to come out. Infection can also occur in, in the blood causing septicemia and endocarditis. What I'm showing here is an echocardiograph you can see the right atrium and the left atrium, and you can see the pacemaker lead passing through the right atrium and a large mass of what actually later turned out to be infected material adherent to the pacemaker lead. This is a vegetation, and the patient, the, the patient clearly has a device that needs to be removed. And in fact, when the lead was finally extracted, there was a mass of infected necrotic material sitting on the end of the lead and getting the, getting the lead out was the best thing to be done for the patient. The other issue with chronically implanted pacing leads, though, is that the lead becomes scarred into the patient. So you can't simply open the incision, take the device out, and then pull on the lead, and the lead comes out. If the lead is stuck, all, stuck down with scar tissue all the way through the circulation, then you need to take more extreme measures to get the lead out. And in fact, you need to cut the lead out. And we do that usually with a laser tipped sheath. And I want to describe that procedure a little bit for you today. The problem with pacing leads is that they have very little tensile strength. And in fact, the conducting wire through the lead is coiled so that when you pull on the lead, all that happens is the coil unravels and you pull out many yards of platinum wire. And if you want to get the lead out, you have to stop the lead from unraveling so that you can exert pull right from the tip of the lead. And the way that we do that is with lead locking devices. Many of you probably know that inside a cardiac pacing or defibrillating lead, there is a portal down which you can insert a stilet or a very fine metal wire to help steering the lead at implantation. 
But into that portal, you can insert one of our locking stilettes, which have a kind of an expandable spring on them, so when they're compressed, they'll go in very easily, but when you expand the, string, then, the, the spring, then the lead sticks in place, and you, when you pull on the end, you're pulling on the whole length of the lead, not just the most proximal part in the pocket. But unfortunately, pulling is, is frequently not enough. You can give the lead a tug, and if it's grossly infected inside the circulation, it may just come out. But usually it won't if the lead's been in for more than six months or a year. And in fact, what you then have to do is you have to cut the adhesions around the lead. And to do that, we use these dual sheath systems. The inner one of the two sheaths actually has a laser tip, and the outer one uh, is there to provide mechanical support. And what you can then do is pull on the locking stilette inside the lead, pull gently on that while you advance the sheaths through the circulation, cutting away the adhesions and getting down to the tip of the lead so the lead is removed completely from the circulation. And here is an example from a real patient where you can see we're advancing an inner sheath over a pacing lead giving pulses of laser energy as we go. And you can see here we've reached some adhesions just as the subclavian vein enters the superior vena cava. And in a second, the lead will actually, the, the, the sheath will actually come a long way down as those adhesions are cut through. And there it comes down. And this is the first coil on what is a defibrillator lead. Here we are at the tip of the lead. We're then advancing the sheath again over. This is another coil on a defibrillator lead, and the sheath will come close to the tip of the lead. The sheath, in a second, will come down to the tip, and then you'll see us actually extract the lead. We're applying gentle tugs, gentle pressure on the tip of the lead, and in a minute, we'll give a brief pulse of laser, and the lead will be extracted. Just a gentle pulse of laser, and there the lead came out. So the lead's now been completely removed from the patient. This is obviously a complex procedure. It's a procedure that we only do when we're confronted with a patient with a chronically imp implanted pacing or defibrillating system where there is either local or systemic sepsis. This is a, a, an operation that requires a multidisciplinary team, including electrophysiologists, but also cardiothoracic surgeons on backup because the feared complication of the procedure is cardiac perforation. Um, and so you need to be able to do an urgent thoracotomy. I would emphasize, though, that the incidence of this unpleasant complication is at the 1% range. But because we have expert cardiothoracic surgeons available at UNC, we believe the procedure can be done safely. So I'd like to emphasize that at UNC, we offer a full range of uh, cardiac electrophysiology procedures, and we can really manage all the cardiac rhythm management problems of your patients, including ventricular tachycardia with devices and ablation, atrial fibrillation, usually with ablation, but also with drug therapy, and the need for defibrillators, biventricular pacemakers and defibrillators, and straightforward pacemakers. We have a, a multidisciplinary team and we take a multidisciplinary approach to the management of cardiac rhythm problems. Um, we operate an open access policy at the University of North Carolina, so if you call us and call that number, we can get your patient admitted the same day that you call us under all circumstances. So we're here to help you and uh, we're here to look after your patients and thank you for your attention.